just outside of Never Summer uh, State Park here in Northern Colorado. I'm gonna be running the Never Summer 100K tomorrow. It should be something like 15,000 feet of climbing over 65 miles, so pretty tough race. Haven't done it before, but I've heard awesome things about it. Uh, tonight and tomorrow night, luckily spending the night in absolute the best case scenario for how remote this is, which is pretty remote. So I'm in uh, a van from Titus Adventure down uh, in the Denver area and they've hooked me up with a turnkey spot, which is great because tonight I'll get a good night's sleep and then tomorrow night when I'm finishing at whatever ass crack of dawn it is, I'll be um, coming in and not having to worry about you know where to sleep. So just kind of show you a couple features of the van here. Obviously got the bed, got the uh, nice kitchen and then you know all the little accessories that come along with it. about 12 miles in cruising along of course this beautiful day is beautiful so far too thanks to all the volunteers for being out here today. so from this point on you got basically downhill to the next uh, aid station moving along trying to save my legs for the second half, which I know is a lot more runnable than the first. I'm just taking a lot of restraint. Through the second aid station here, and now the real fun begins. I'm just about 20 miles in, but have almost all the climbing to go. So this should be fun. 21-ish miles in, starting probably the hardest climb of the course here. I'll show you in a second, but it's just straight the fuck up a mountain. Good news is, after this climb, you're muscle manos halfway done with your climbing. Bad news is, you're halfway done with your climbing. Up there is where we're going. Yikes. It's looking down. I can't emphasize enough how friggin' steep this climb is. Holy hell. Climb sucks. <laughs> We're not training. Just touch the summit of diamond, and now get to drop down and torture your legs the other way. Just as a perspective, how steep it is, but look at these views, man. Uh, so far, moving okay. Definitely need to cool off, aka get some nutrition in once I'm down the next aid station here. But pretty sure I'm in absolutely no jeopardy of cutoffs, which is cool. So yeah, just cruising. Just about 27 miles in here. It is hot. Working, almost fell. Working down to uh, the basically kind of halfway aid station where I'll have my first drop bag of the day. I guess <laughs> 27 miles in is a good time to mention I am doing this completely solo, so no crew, no pacers. So this will be the longest I've ever run on my own, 65 miles or so. At this point in the day, cutoffs are really 
not a concern for me anymore, which is great. So now I can kind of just get into a groove and run. It's very dusty today, so I'm a little worried about my lungs. Might take the inhaler at some point, but yeah, I guess just a basic check-in. Overall going good. From, from the Montgomery aid that I just passed, so what is that, mile 25 or so, uh, down to Ruby is basically all downhill, which is quite nice because you just climbed a lot. Here's a sample of the downhill. It's definitely like somewhat runnable, but I'm not trying to like blow my ankle into pieces at mile 28. So playing it conservative, which is really annoying because there's so much climbing on this. You want to just bomb this, but it's just full of baby heads and loose crap. Not ideal through the Ruby aid station. It's probably the most I've sat all day. Good 10, 15 minutes, probably too long, but I drank a lot. Changed up my shirt, hat, shoes, and yeah, storms are rolling in, which I'm torn about. I'm like so happy because it's hot as hell, but I'm about to go on exposed ridgeline. So I would really prefer you know, lightning and thunder. For those of you who are like, yo, why are you always filming walking? There's two answers. Number one, I have no desire to film when I'm running. And number two, I forgot. Usually the views when I'm walking are this. And when I'm running, it's not. All right, headed up the clear lake. You gotta go up there, hole punch your bib, and then turn around. So it's two miles up, two miles back, hit the same aid station, and then you got 20 to go. It's really fucking hot today. Sweat my ass off. Another brutal climb up to clear lake. This one's tough because the sun is just blasting you right now. And you have a thousand feet of climbing in two miles, so it's steep. Your legs are starting to get cooked. It's just so damn technical. That's why this course is so hard. It's a, a combo of the climbing and the technicalness of it. It's just brutal. Because even on the way down here, I've only seen a handful of people running. Coming down from Clear Lake, I didn't show it to you guys because it's like off the course and I have zero desire to go over there. And I also didn't show you the hole punch that you have to get because I didn't feel like showing you that either. But super obvious, just hanging from the tree. That's how they know you came all the way up to the lake. through the, I don't know, whatever that Clear Creek aid station is. Again, about 20 miles to go, and the weather is not looking nice, and it's getting dark, so classic twofer. Positive though, a lot of the climbing is done, a lot of the hard climbing at least, and this is all downhill for the most part to the next aid station, so I'm not gonna film for a bit. See you guys. Hopefully don't get struck by lightning. Just a quick vibe check. This has been the last four miles. This is very not the worst part. It's like ice skating in mud. Oh, there you go. Whew. The last Two hours has been objectively, objectively, absolutely terrible. I literally, like, does that look fun? But, hey, positive vibes only, even though I want to scream right now in frustration. Because look at this light behind me. Just showed you the rainbow in front. So that's pretty cool. It's just going to take me nine hours to finish because I can't, I literally can't move leaving Canada, Canadian aid. Vibes are slightly higher because I'm drier, 
but there's some like dead bodies in there. Like it's not funny, but people are struggling. Also this mud, the last, uh, what is this? 13 miles here. It's going to be a battle, but that's why I do this. And if you're going to get negative, that literally achieves nothing. So positive vibes only. Still muddy. Through the last aid station, just about two miles to go. My legs are cooked, but so pumped, almost be done. Runner on the horizon, 177, Mickey Martin from Evergreen. Bring it in, that 100K finish. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh my God, I'm dead. Uh, back in the van now. Thank you to Titus for hooking me up for this because I cannot tell you the level of nope that would be living with me right now if I had to sleep in a tent. I just did a little quick shower, which I'm not going to show you guys for obvious reasons. Um, which they hooked me up with as well. Having a warm, dry place to sleep tonight. Whew. Yeah, I'll wrap up my thoughts on uh, Never Suffer 100K tomorrow, but for now, I'm passing the fuck out. Back in the van next day. Feel pretty good actually overall. So just went to the pre or the post race briefing and some pretty insane stats. So they had 308 people start this race, only 192 uh, finished. So 62% of the people finished this race, which is crazy. Uh, so super proud of where I ended up. I was like 75th overall. Uh, I'm gonna give myself 1919 because I started in the bathroom, but my official time was like 19 hours, 21 minutes. To talk about Never Summer 100K quickly wow it was tough i would say definitely harder than some of the hundreds i've done uh, i'm thinking of leadville borderline run rabbit and i say that because the terrain is unforgiving that climb up diamond mountain diesel diesel amount of runnable terrain in, in terms of like smooth uh single trail so i kind of alluded to this and like obviously the footage wasn't maybe the best at times because i'm running this race like i'm not sitting here trying to make the best quality video I'm trying to give you guys a good idea of what to expect but also you know live in the moment as well after i left the clear lake aid station the second time the skies just absolutely opened up and it rained for a solid two three hours the entire trail was dirt single track for the first time all day right excited to run it Oh, no, 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 no. It was mud. And it was mud, like someone at breakfast put it, like peanut butter mud, which is perfect because it was just impossible. It was impossible. Uh, I fell once in it, which was really awesome, especially because there's a lot of mud mixed with like cow and horse crap. So really just a vibe overall. And, you know, it's summer in July, so you have to expect it's going to rain. But it, it was a lot, a lot of rain. A lot of people dropped out at the Canadian aid station there. Yeah, it just added to the difficulty of the day, which was like a lack of runnable terrain, even on the terrain that should have been runnable. Um, so overall, I'd say never 100 summer K. Um, for me, maybe not a repeat just because honestly, it just beat me up and I need a lot of time to think about wanting to do it again. The views were excellent. Awesome, awesome views. Really well run race. Uh, and of course, like you want a challenge, like it's a great challenge of a race. There's a lot of rocky terrain. The climb up to Clear Lake, only two miles, brutal. It was so nice to come back, rinse off, have a warm bed. Sorry, Travis, the sheets and bedding not the best right now um but just having like a warm comfortable place to sleep after a day like that was so so clutch if you're new to my channel i do virtual trail guides based here in colorado but also have a ton of ultra running stuff so go ahead and check that out again thanks to titus adventure co for supplying the van for the weekend hope you guys found this video at all helpful if you've run never summer 100k would love to hear your experience so drop it in the comments below thank you so much for watching and of course we'll see you guys on the next adventure